Fingers crossed. This is the first time I'm trying to start it. What is up, YouTube? News Carl here. My goal for this video is to crank this over for the first time, and hopefully, it starts. So, let's dive right into it. So, I already got a little bit of a head start, um, and I didn't film it, but. I made some spacers for my fuel rail bracket, so now this is nice and sturdy. It's like that on both sides. I got my Mishimoto intake boot on. It was too long, so it was hitting the strut tower, so I cut that down a little bit. Also, on the throttle body, there are some ridges that you need to trim down. I trimmed it down with the grinder. Uh, that way, you can slide this boot all the way on this way. Typically, it sits like right around here, so expect that. Here's a better look at the throttle body. As you can see, there's a little bit left right there, but you pretty much gotta grind that down as much as you can. Also got a clamp on this plug, so should be good. I've got a couple more things to button up. I gotta finish off the modified intake temperature sensor for the M50 manifold. That shouldn't be too bad. I just gotta thread a new one on. Gotta plug in the injectors, wire in my math, connect the O2 sensors, put some spark plugs on, Connect my belts and that kind of thing. I'm not going to hook up a coolant system because I'm literally just going to try to start it up um, just to see if it starts. I'm not really going to let it warm up or run for that long. Put some oil, check for any leaks, and I got to spend a lot of time on my ECU so I can get it to run with all this new stuff. Seems like easy stuff, but probably going to take me a long time. Now, when you are doing an M50 manifold conversion on the M54, the stock intake air temperature sensor um, doesn't fit on this manifold so i got this one it's a modified intake air temperature sensor and really the only difference is it's threaded so let's get this on before i toss the intake manifold on because i intend to keep it on unless uh Unless something bad happens, I put my coolant hoses back on, just to save me some headache. I got my fuel line connected. I have my vacuum line for my fuel pressure re regulator connected. Tidied up a little bit of the harness. The plugs that I'm not using anymore, I kind of just zip tied so that they don't get in the way of anything. And I cut the plug for the intake air temperature sensor away from the stock location. It was zip tied over here, um, cut that away so I could extend it because now it's on the bottom of the intake manifold. That should be pretty much it. I think we're ready to toss this on, hopefully for the last time, um, unless there's issues, knock on wood. Take out the cap for I forget what plug this is, but easy enough. That way I can clear the manifold. I got some NGK 4644B. What is it? BKR7Es. I'm not going to gap them quite yet. Um, I want to see if they work, but stock season on. I got a new O2 sensor. I have an actual one just in case, but I believe I I can set up the MS43 to where I only need one O2 sensor. But I'm just gonna stick this right behind the turbo. Um, hopefully I can get this thing to start just like that. So I'm an idiot and I bought two post-cat O2 sensors. So I had to go buy another one. This one is a pre-cat O2 sensor. So for my MAF setup, I'm going to be running the popular PMAS HPX MAF. The one that I got comes with the aluminum block so that you can weld it onto a 3-inch intercooler pipe. I already have a piece of intercooler pipe right here. Uh, don't worry about any of the clocking position. I, I haven't figured that out yet. I do plan on cutting this pipe um, right at the bend so I just have a straight piece because I plan on taking a bunch of these and cutting them up to kind of piece them together 
and get the bends how I want it, weld it up, that kind of stuff. But anyways, I use this to mark up where I want to cut. So I need to very carefully cut this. Um, I also have marked out the area, um, the farthest I can go out, but I, ideally I want to get this. I only have an angle grinder right now, so we'll see how well I can get this cut. Science. Now I got a rough hole, but I gotta clean that up quite a bit. It's not the prettiest hole in the world, but she fits. And even better, all my mistakes are covered up. So, once this block gets welded on, none of that stuff is even going to be visible, and I'm going to have a nice slot to put my math in. Awesome. Now really, my intention here, oh, I know I'm going to have vacuum leaks like crazy, and it's probably not going to be reading accurate, but I, I really just wanted to get this set up to where it can at least read the air going through a tube like it's intended to, and uh, Hopefully get this thing to at least idle for like five seconds. So I found this site um, on how to turbo the E46. And for the PMAS map, and this is only applicable to, I believe up to 2002. Um, you, you have six wires from your PMAS map. And you're not gonna be using the gray ones. And the red wire is going to go to the red wire on the stock math wiring. The yellow is going to go to the blue. And this brown wire is going to go to the black. And then you have this extra black wire that's going to ground to somewhere on the chassis. I'm not going to fully solder this up right now. Um, I'm kind of just going to have them contact each other. I know it sounds kind of sketchy. But I don't want to finalize any wiring quite yet. Um, I just want to see if this thing starts. That's all I want. Oh yeah. That's probably gonna piss some people off including me inside but I just want to see this thing start at least all right so we have the intake manifold on the vacuum line for the fuel pressure regulator is hooked up fuel line is hooked up the injectors are hooked up and mounted M50 manifold is mounted MAF sensor is somewhat wired in yeah, you know just enough to get the start in uh, O2 sensors plugged and I got the serpentine belt on, so this thing is pretty much ready to rock and roll. Spark plugs are in. I think the last thing we need to do is the fun stuff. We're going to dive into the MS-43 and we're going to change some parameters, so hopefully we can get this thing started up for the first time. <laughs> well, I need to add oil and fuel and prime the motor and stuff, but let's, let's, do, let's do this. <laughs> now, I hate to break it to you, but if you have any of the other E46 ECUs, like the MS-45, uh, I can't really help you here. I think MS-42 is going to be a little bit similar, but we're going to be focusing particularly on the MS-43. Before you get started, you need to go ahead and grab yourself an IMPA cable. Um, it has to be the one with the FTDI chip. Um, I'll link this one down in the description, but you need to get your hand on one of those. Um, maybe even a legit Galetto cable or whatever the hell it is. Um, but you need this to be able to communicate with one of the softwares. Um, previously, you had to use um, I think it was JM Garage Flasher to get to the 512 kilobit file, which is the full file on the ECU. That would involve pulling the ECU and grounding a pin. Apparently with this new software by the MS-43 development group, um, you don't really need to do that. So we're going to test that out today. Hopefully all goes well. So before we proceed with this video, I will say that um, this is for entertainment purposes only. Um, I am by no means an expert with the MS-43, so whatever you see in this video today, if you're going to do it, proceed at your own risk because I honestly don't know, this, this is my first time taking a stab at it. So 
Before we get started, I have a couple links in the video description below. Take a look at those when you get a chance. But like I was also saying earlier, most people use JM Garage Flasher to get the full file off the ECU and then using something like Galetto to flash the partial files. If you don't know, the 512 kilobit file or the full file is going to be everything pertaining to the ECU, including how it um, reads the maps and does the calculations and all that stuff. And then the partial file, which is a 64 kilobit file, is going to be like basically the map tables, I guess you would say, something kind of like the dumbed down version. So um, before we get started, you want to make sure that you download the MS43 or MS4X flasher right here. This is by the development group of the MS43 and actually the MS4X. I got to refer to the MS4X. Um, this is something pretty recent. Most people, like I said, were, were using Galetto and uh, JM Garage Flasher, but we're going to take a stab at this. Now, once you download it, you want to go ahead and activate your ECU. Once you plug it in, you'll get the code. You'll get that code and then you go ahead and want, go to this activation site and then you put that in. We're going to go, go ahead and open that up. So once you have the program opened up, you can go ahead and plug in your IMPA cable hit identify ECU and it should be able to tell you what ECU you have. Once you have that all set, go ahead and click full read. You're going to read the file that's on your ECU and go ahead and store that somewhere um, where you're not going to touch it. Because if you ever want to revert back to stock, you want to go ahead and revert to uh, that stock file calibration, whatever you want to call it. From there, you're going to want to flash in the correct format for the MS-43, which is version 56 that is the version that has the most supports right here under firmware files i am going to be running the ews delete and also uh, launch control eventually so i have the, all these files are um, basically free on the ms4x wiki i took the file and i already flashed it into my ecu and i went and read the partial file like i said on the ms4x flasher you can do a partial read so that you can get basically the map tables. So now opening up ROM Raider, there's two programs primarily that people use uh, for flashing the e or for changing the maps on uh, on the MS-43. It's ROM Raider and Tuner Pro. I'm not too familiar with Tuner Pro yet because uh, there's a lot of abbreviations in there that I, I really don't know. And frankly, I just need to get this started for the first time. So I'm gonna be using ROM Raider because I've worked with it before. I, I use it for the BRZ. Before we get started, the files that you get from the MS-40 are going to be pretty raw. You want to get some definition files, which you can find the definition files on the MS-4X wiki. And I'm going to go ahead and open the tune that I was already working on. So I went ahead and went into configurations and I changed the secondary air pump to zero. I'm not going to be using that anymore. The exhaust flap, I don't have that anymore. So I changed that to disable. And O2 sensor configuration, I changed to single bank auto learning of post cat O2 sensor. Auto learning is basically like whether or not it is there and uh, that kind of stuff. Basically, this is the one I need. I think this is the setting I need to set it to. DISA, I pretty much disabled. So I set that to zero. Sensor scaling, you gotta change the math scaling. I believe this is what you use, which it's already set. Um, I don't know how to... I don't know why both of these are showing up. I guess I'll have to figure that part out. Basically, this is the, this is the one that I'm going to be working off of. I don't know if this is accurate. Um, this is something that you could switch in MS-43, but I'm just going to see if it starts with this because it, it is reading to 2,000 kilograms per hour for the mass airflow. Um, I think the PMAS goes all the way to 2,400, but um, I'm also going to link down below um, a useful site for boosting the E46. Um, he has it set to exactly how it is right here, I believe. So I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. I changed the fuel injector dead times. Um, this is what um, is on the MS4X wiki. This is what's particular to my fuel injectors. Whatever injectors you're gonna be running, you have to change it to that. And for now, I'm not gonna change too much on fuel. I think all I'm going to change is uh, the main. So I did some quick math and all I did was divide the stock injector flow rate by my new injector flow rate. So it's gonna be 23 pounds per hour 
or 24.3 pounds per hour divided by 70 pounds per hour. So that gives me my factor of 0.344. Um, I'm not sure if I need to change anything else. I think I might have to. I don't know if I want to change any of this stuff yet. So I think I pretty much covered everything. I think that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to double check my work, make sure everything looks okay. And we're going to go ahead and flash this into the MS-43. I'm going to see if this works. Alright, so now that the MS-43 is flashed, let's fill this up with oil. Not some new oil, obviously. Just some stuff I got laying around. And we're going to see if it leaks a little bit. If everything checks out fine, then I hook up the fuel pump and then check for leaks on the fuel and then we'll go from there. I don't see any leaks quite yet. Hopefully I don't have any at all. Um, I'll keep looking. See if I find anything. So obviously no fuel hooked up yet, but the good news is it cranked over, which means that the tune is on the MS-43. So let's hook up fuel and see if uh, there's any leaks and let's try to start it. All right, so just like the fuel pump, prime motor and uh, fuel pump's working and it looks like there's no leaks so far, fingers crossed. This is the first time I'm trying to start it. Ooh, a car extinguisher nearby. And there you have it. She starts up, albeit very rough. I kind of expected that. Um, you did hear some stuff like, it, it almost sounded like knocking. That was actually just a shifter selector rod um, hitting the trans tunnel because it's not hooked up to anything. I just made sure it's neutral. But a successful first start. My very first first start for a car. Putting the engine in it, it's like all this stuff. I get it, it's still an OEM engine, but still, come on. That's, it's a milestone on itself. So, got a lot of work ahead of me. I gotta work on that map, try to get this thing idling. I gotta do the intercooler exhaust, get everything back on, and then hopefully start this thing up for real um, with everything warming up, all that stuff. So, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.